up next on This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Players tee it up in the Mackenzie Investments Open presented by Jaguar Laval, after which only the top 60 on the order of merit will make it to the season finale in London. Get a high five? But also take time off the course to make yeah. a difference. Bringing a smile on their face, making them think of something else while they're being taken care of, this is pretty special. Just like that. Plus, we get to know some of the fresh faces on the McKenzie Tour. Here with Ben Griffin, McKenzie Tour winner, possibly the most eligible bachelor on the McKenzie Tour. And walk alongside Michael Gellerman as he navigates an impressive season. It's kind of lit a fire in me a little bit to figure out how to, how to make some birdies or you're going to get steamrolled out here. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. It's here. The Mackenzie Investments Open presented by Jaguar Laval in Montreal. And there's a lot on the line. As the final stop before the Freedom 55 Financial Championship in London, it's the last chance to earn a spot inside the top 60 and a chance to chase the dream at the next level. I feel really good going into the week. It's definitely making the top 60s in the back of the mind, but I'm going to try not to think about my exact number too much, and it'd mean a lot to be able to get in the top 60 and make it to the Tour Championship. Last year I was in the same position, finished up 61st, so I'm back on that bubble, and it's not a good feeling, and nobody wants to be here, but you know what you need to do coming into the week. I had a whole year to think about it, so I definitely don't want to be in that same position this year. While some are fighting to keep their season alive, others are jockeying for a bigger prize. And although Tyler McCumber leads the order of merit by a healthy margin over Zach Wright, it wouldn't be impossible for Wright to catch him with wins in Montreal and London. And if he did, well, that would definitely vault him into Player of the Year status. Speaking of Player of the Year, the race for the Freedom 55 Financial Canadian Player of the Year trophy is up for grabs. Entering the McKenzie Investments Open, Toronto's Michael Gligic was leading BC's Riley Wielden by just over $6,300. Riley Wielden's had a hell of a year. He almost won in Thunder Bay, and I think Taylor Pendris right behind me, he's been a hell of a player for many years. So to put myself in contention with them, it's uh, pretty special. If you're in contention for that award, then probably doing a few things right this year. I think they're starting to see the progression of, of some of the younger pros getting onto the tour in recent years and winning, and I think everyone's excited and wants to see more guys on the big tour, and they, they understand that it starts here. Even if you're way back on the money list, you can, uh, you know, a win will get you into the top 20 or into the top 10 or into the top five, so you're just trying to put yourself in that position and, and uh, you know, see what happens in London. I don't think it'll be easy by any means for anybody, but uh, three quarters of the way through the year, I'm in that race still, so hopefully I can finish up strong and get something out of it. If you look at the top, you know, five or six Canadians on the money list, they're contending every other week, it, it seems. It's great to see that there's, you know, Canadians up at the top of the leaderboard. And it definitely prepares you for the next level. That's why everybody's up here. you got to bring it every week if you want to uh, get anything out of it. As players prepared for the penultimate event of the season, Good morning, Hi, welcome to McKenzie Investments. Hey, David Pastor. Good morning, Francois Pobo. Welcome to McKenzie Investments. Mackenzie Tour veteran David Pastor and pro golfer and Montreal native Carolyn C.O. spent some time with the event and tour sponsor Mackenzie Investments to learn more about the company's involvement on and off the golf course. We've been title sponsor of the Mackenzie Tour going back to 2015. The tour now has 12 stops and it solidifies our commitment to amateur sport, investing in uh, player development communities and local charities. So it just surrounds all of our core values that we have as an organization. Investing in local charities is one of the main reasons why we're involved in the McKenzie Tour. Over 2017, we've risen and donated over a million dollars throughout our involvement in those 12 local 
stops of the McKenzie Tour. And we chose to partner up here in Montreal with uh, La Fondation du Centre Hospitalier Saint Justine, which is a kids' hospital. And the reason for selecting the hospital uh, is basically aligns with our commitment to the McKenzie Tour, which is basically investing in our future. The tour, I don't think, would be what it is without them. To have them sponsoring the tour just allows us to chase our dream of playing professional golf. That's why I love this tour so much. Everything from the money list to the pro-ams, everything is exactly like you know, the web.com and then the PGA Tour. I don't think there's any other you know, better way to prepare players in general. Everything is just exactly how it is at the higher levels. Big thank you to Mackenzie for sure. De Brossard, Québec, voici. Let's welcome Caroline Sio. Carolyn CEO's McKenzie Investments adventures continued when she teed it up on a sponsor's exemption during the first round of the McKenzie Investments Open presented by Jaguar Laval. The 25-year-old from Montreal became just the second woman to play on the McKenzie Tour in the PGA Tour era. But a 10 over par on day one eliminated any hopes of her making it to the weekend. Bubble boy J.D. Tomlinson fared much better on Elm Ridge Country Club's tough north course. His five under par 67 on Thursday consisted of six birdies to just one bogey. Good enough to get him into the top 10 by day's end. Florida native Blake Olson climbed into solo second place thanks to his seven under par 65. The 27 year old entered the event 42nd on the order of merit with one thing on his mind, staying in the moment. Just getting more comfortable with the situation and just keep moving forward and just trying to keep playing well every day. Just two events removed from his first professional title, Corey Pereira posted an impressive bogey-free nine under par 63 and the course record. It was awesome, just really got it going out there. Felt like Tita Green was just mediocre, but man, I haven't putted that well in a long time. I seem to make everything out there and uh, golf's fun when it's like that. Pereira, who finished 39th on the order of merit last season, came to Montreal in sixth place. A win would solidify his place in the five and the web.com tour status that comes with it. It's huge being in that top five. You know, you got to start out on web and, um, you know, I, I know that, but I can only control my game, you know, control one shot at a time. And um, I just try to go shoot the lowest score I can and see if the numbers stack up. But Pereira wasn't the only one playing for status at the next level. And 11 players were within four shots of the University of Washington alum at day's end. Up next, the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada connects with a great cause to continue the tradition of giving back. We're privileged to do what we do. You have the opportunity to give back, you really should. And then 144 becomes 72 as the last full field event races toward the cut line. We're back with round two of the Mackenzie Investments Open presented by Jaguar Laval after the break. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi, Chris Petfish. Very nice to meet yeah, you. Nice Moko, to meet you. I'm yes. from the Shusan Justin Foundation. Yes, Thank you for coming here. On Wednesday, Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada rookie Chris Petfish spent time with some special kids from the Shusan Justin Foundation. Hey, buddy, what's your name? Agent. Agent? I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. Servicing one of the largest hospitals in Canada, the foundation focuses on providing children and their families with state-of-the-art treatment and research facilities adapted to their needs. This hospital has been built by the community. This hospital is about healing the kids that need very high level of specialized care. Hey! Can a high five? Good job. When we have kids and families that are coming here, it's because they're going through difficult times. But we try to bring to the kids initiatives such as this one, where the kids can feel like it's almost a, almost a normal life. Bringing a smile on their face, making them think of something else while they're being taken care of. And this is pretty special. My daughter, she just turned 18. She has cystic fibrosis. She's been here since she's six months old. So we are, uh, it's like a home here, a second home. 
When we received the, the diagnostics, we thought that we didn't have the future for her. And now we can see that she received the best care here. I just think we're privileged to do what we do. I mean, we play golf for a living and you know, there's a lot of people that are in need and you know, this really puts into perspective like these kids are really fighting to survive and you know, I'm out on a golf course every day and get to do what I love to do. So if you have the opportunity to get back, you really should. Ooh, it's a little softer, you got it. Hey. <laughs> nice. The McKenzie Tour, PGA Tour Canada is very important for us. We do research, we do care, we teach the new generation of doctors, of nurses, so the needs are pretty incredible here. If you could see what we see when you come here, you could see the needs are tremendous. And I think when you give to the Shu St. Justin Foundation, you know that the gifts can do tremendous things. I enjoyed it a lot. It was really fun just to see them, you know, just get out of their element, and just, you know, hit a couple golf shots, you know, put a smile on their face and just have a good time. Hey, another high five for that one. So this right here. After taking time off the course to give back, the action heated up on the course in round two of the McKenzie Investments Open presented by Jaguar Laval, where Corey Pereira carted five birdies and just one bogey to shoot a 68 to remain atop the leaderboard. Pereira's 13 under through 36 holes replicated the two round total of his first career victory last month at the ATB Financial Classic. Two shots off the lead in a tie for second, Cody Blick. This marked the fifth time this season that the 24 year old from California posted 60s in his first two rounds. Joining Blick in the second place position was Theo Humphrey, the only player in the field to go bogey free through 36 holes. As 11 players sat within four strokes of the leader at day's end, they looked to Saturday to break free from the packed leaderboard. But Florida native J.D. Tomlinson wouldn't be one of them. He struggled to a four over 76 on day two, missing the cut, and the season ending Freedom 55 Financial Championship in London for a second consecutive year. Coming up after the break on this is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. We're the Mac Tour Rux, and this is the McKenzie Tour. And later, it's moving day at the McKenzie Investments Open presented by Jaguar Laval. This is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. We're the Mac Tour Rux, and this is the McKenzie Tour. <laughs> Do I need to say stone face? Ten of us rookies decided to uh, rent a house this week in Montreal, so kind of just hanging out, got a place to ourselves, and uh, we'll go see how the guys are doing. It's gone. Here with Ben Griffin, McKinsey Tour winner, possibly the most eligible bachelor on the McKinsey Tour. Have you ever kissed anyone like you kissed that trophy in Thunder Bay? We gotta know. <laughs> no, I mean, that was probably one of my best kisses ever. It was a nice kiss. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> you heard it here first, on the lookout for the one. How's it feel to be in Montreal this week? Uh, ideal, I feel like my home territory, last name Blanchet. This is, this is my type of jam. They pronounce it real well here. Chandler Blanchet, ladies and gentlemen. Ian, looks like you kind of maybe work out some. Tell us a little bit about that. A lot of push-ups. You know, I'm up to 10 now, so that's good. Is it true that a guy like me, a small guy, can still sometimes hit it past you? Yeah, like 100% uh, like of the time, mostly. Yeah. Lee, got any uh, French phrases for us that you've been studying up on? Oui. Oui, oui? Yeah. We're gonna give a little tour of the house. We got uh, kind of the common area slash Fortnite room in here. A couple French handbooks we've been studying up on. I'm over here under the making friends uh, category. I've been kind of struggling with that one. Um, je suis célibataire. Uh, can we get the English translation on that, Ben? I'm single. Wow, you heard it here first. Our Airbnb hosts were nice enough to leave some slippers for us if we have any late night ventures. Got the kitchen in here, fridge is stocked with all our supplies. <laughs> That's, those weren't Budweiser's in the back. In here we got uh, Dewu and Dawson. They've been snuggling up in this king size bed. One of the other rooms is in here. I think a couple guys might, whoa, geez. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight, guys. I think we're gonna get back to uh, eating pizza. Have a good one.
Saturday is moving day at the McKenzie Investments Open presented by Jaguar Laval. Texas native Paul McConnell shot a bogey-free 666 in the third round, which propelled him from the T4 position into a tie for first. The McKenzie Tour veteran has had his best season to date in Canada, finishing in the top 20 three times. 24-year-old Cody Blick started his third round run tied for second, but could only manage an even par 72 falling back into a tie for ninth. Meanwhile, recent Vanderbilt grad Theo Humphrey carded four birdies and one bogey on the way to a three under 69, which vaulted him into a tie for third heading into Sunday's final round, his best 54 hole total on the McKenzie Tour this season. Matching Humphrey's 69 with one of his own, 36-hole leader Corey Pereira maintained his position atop the leaderboard, continuing his stellar play with only one bogey on the final hole of the day. Played really solid today. Hit the ball pretty good today and just limited my mistakes. I think my only bogey was the last, which was unfortunate. Just hit the wrong club in the fairway and, you know, mistakes happen, but played really well today. The California native built a two-shot lead alongside McConnell, heading into the final round. Just excited, more than anything. Just can't wait to go out there and try to make a bunch of birdies, and Paul's a really good guy and a really good player, so looking forward to dueling with him, and you know, unfortunately, the hiccup at the end brought some of the rest of the field into play, but looking forward to it. Can Corey Pereira grab victory number two, or will Paul McConnell earn his first McKenzie Tour title? Or will someone else emerge from the chase pack to win the McKenzie Investments Open presented by Jaguar Laval? Find out after the break. But first. Now your dad, Jerry, was your first coach. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't have picked up golf if it wasn't for him. We hear from a two-time runner-up, Michael Gellerman, when this is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns. This is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Coming off his second runner-up finish in his last four starts, Michael Gellerman has made a name for himself on the McKenzie Tour. With a handful of top tens this season, the University of Oklahoma grad currently sits fourth in the order of merit. So we cut up with the Sooner alum in this week's On the Bag. In your yardage book, you have Boomer, is that the? Yeah, Boomer Sooner is the kind of the OU uh, slogan, I guess. You're new to a lot of the viewers, so give us the story of Michael Gallman. I grew up in a really small town. I uh, grew up on a nine-hole golf course. No bunkers, no range, and so I'm pretty self-taught. Now, your first hole-in-one, I've seen, I've seen a picture of the, your reaction to your first hole-in-one. Do you remember it? I remember it was from 100 yards. I hit seven irons, so that's how young I was. I was playing with my dad and his skins group, and so they all kind of went nuts. I don't know where it went. I'm looking to hit it a little straighter and a little further in the tournament. Now your dad, Jerry, was your first coach. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't have picked up golf if it wasn't for him. And to this day, he loves golf as much as I do. He plays as much as I do or more. Ooh, looks good, hang on. Oh. Mm, good try. What's it been like playing the McKenzie Tour? There's a bunch of good guys out here. We've played a lot of good golf courses. It's kind of lit a fire in me a little bit to, to figure out how to, how to make some birdies or you're gonna get steamrolled out here. <laughs> Easy as that. You have a real love for dogs. Tell me about your dog Shadow at home and how you and Allie came to, to be the parents of Shadow. My girlfriend is just a sucker for everything and wanted a dog. She ended up basically saying, I wanna get this dog. And I said, okay, let's do it and it's just been a huge blessing. Give me about Grandma's fudge. It's just a uh, fudge handed down basically on my dad's side. We only make it during Christmas, so maybe that's what makes it so special. This isn't Grandma's fudge, but it is It is Quebec fudge. Okay. You need to try it and, okay. and give us a little comparison maybe. No? Well, this is pretty darn good. It's pretty darn good. It's not, it's not Grandma's fudge, but it's pretty darn good. On Championship Sunday, anything can happen. And by midday, it was clear that the McKenzie Investments Open presented by Jaguar Laval was destined for an exciting finish. Starting with a two-stroke lead over the field, co-leaders Corey Pereira and Paul McConnell headed in two different directions from the start. 
Pereira moved forward with three birdies on a clean front side, while McConnell was stuck in neutral. And after an even par outward nine, the 27-year-old veteran fell out of contention, going two over down the stretch. He finished in a four-way tie for eighth. Playing in the second to last group of the day, Theo Humphrey managed a two under 70 on his final 18 to finish in a share of fifth. But more importantly, moved inside the top 60, earning a spot in the season ending finale in London. But his playing partner, Blake Olsen, quickly charged into contention. Olsen posted the clubhouse lead at 19 under par, one ahead of Corey Pereira, and could only watch as Pereira navigated a tough up and down to save par on the 72nd hole, sending the McKenzie Investments Open to a playoff. Both players missed the green on the first extra hole. Olsen managed to save par with a nifty bunker shot, but Pereira wasn't able to match, giving Olsen his first professional victory. This tour is filled with so many good players. The caliber is so high, but it's great because you know everyone's getting better, and no matter what, if you're competing on this tour, you're, you're playing good golf. Despite missing his first cut of the season, Tyler McCumber maintained his stranglehold on the top spot in the order of merit. With a T3 finish in Montreal, Zach Wright solidified his standing at number two, but now it's a mathematical certainty that McCumber will finish the season ranked number one. George Cunningham, Corey Pereira, and Michael Gellerman round out the top five. With the victory, Olsen jumped up 34 spots into the top 10 and is within striking distance of the top five heading into the Freedom 55 Financial Championship. I was trying to get in the top 10. This win does that, but by no means am I secure, so I need to go have a good week next week and then uh, and see where I stack up. Next time, the top 60 in the order of merit tee it up at the Freedom 55 Financial Championship, where players work not only to hoist the final trophy of the season, but for the chance to earn status on the web.com tour. By week's end in London, a year of hard work will be recognized and one player will be named Player of the Year. Catch all the excitement next time on This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada.